Am I alive? Hey everyone, it's it's Ernest Heavyside here. Um, <laughs> since my last stream, I made a lot of upgrades. <laughs> I worked last time. Um, I accidentally didn't close my model while I, while I opened the game, and so it completely lagged out my stream and crashed it. So I had a really bright idea. I was like, oh, well, I know an easy way to avoid that. I can just program something that will automatically close my model when I change the game. And so I spent a long time doing that. And now I have a program that automatically opens up all the programs I need and places them around the screen. It'll save me a lot of time in the future. So it's nice to be able to do that. Um, I don't have anything prepared today, actually. I, I'm just going to talk today. Um, one of the things that really bothered me when I was <laughs> when I was programming was well, this this is something that's always bothered me. Is programmers tend to be gatekeepers, where instead of explaining something in simple terms or in human understandable terms, they'll explain something. As complicated as they possibly can to try to like one-up you they try to like confuse you so that they can feel good about themselves and you encounter a lot of that <laughs> like in not just programming but like lots of technology like I remember I was building something out of a <laughs> an RC battery like like for like a model plane and just they have their whole it that whole industry has their own like standards and specifications and notations and I didn't understand any of it and I was like trying to ask people what all this stuff meant and nobody would give me a straight answer they just just be like well if you don't know that you must be dumb or you, you must be an outsider so I think people naturally do that sort of thing to a large extent and that's how they like create groups you know they like to <laughs> they like to exclude people <laughs> yeah well that's just human behavior i guess anyway um things are going well i got my cooling fans so my computer won't overheat anymore got my new microphone i got i installed a bunch of uh python stuff that i was missing before so maybe that improves the quality of the stream. We'll see. Can't wait to see the VOD after this. Yeah, I'm on my improvement arc. Like, I'm... I make a big improvements every day. You know, zero to hero. As they say. <laughs> I wish I had topics prepared, but... I really don't. Except, like, ranting about programmers. And... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, <laughs> my, <laughs> I don't want to, like, come out and say what my discipline is, but we do have a snobbish attitude about, <laughs> about, about other, about other disciplines, let's just say that, um, in college we were, like, <laughs> we were very, very full of ourselves, and very much looking down on everyone else, <laughs> so... <laughs> Literally in my case. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, just talking extemporaneously off the cuff is a really interesting skill to have. Um, it's like a muscle that you can build up over time. And... You just got to keep working at it, I guess. I, I have had that skill at certain times. Um, I'm a little bit out of practice right now, but I think I generally talk about things that I'm, like, interested in or things that I've been doing. <laughs> Maybe I should put more effort into, like, role-playing. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of wanted to do the heavy side function today to show you guys what the heavy side function is all about. But <laughs> I think I'll I'll do that another day when I'm not when I'm not so so tired basically. 
Yeah, I was up really late working on that. Um, so what I wanted to do was I wanted it to be like a an, an applet. So something that's on your desktop that you can click, right? And you can click it, and when you click it, it changes everything. That would be amazing. Um, the problem is <laughs> applets are are very out of date these days. They are not supported at all. Nobody wants them because of the security risks. And so that is my entire programming experience right there is mostly applets. So <laughs> there it goes. But, um, you know, I guess this is a point that I, I've reinforced before, but even if, you know, like my, my, my main programming talent was just phased out basically um, I still learned a lot from from it so I can apply it to other things so the important thing is that you're just learning all the time and yeah that's kind of a skill too um, I've known I've known some guys who are and girls who are veritable just geniuses and they they didn't need to try very hard at all but you know we all have our advantages and our disadvantages and I have some disadvantages one of my disadvantages is that I commit too much to one thing before dropping it so so in this case I was really intent on getting the desktop like applet I really wanted to like click the buttons and change the scenes, you know? <laughs> and that image was in my mind. I was like, I have to get that working. And I devoted way too much time into it. And I, <laughs> it just wasn't possible. Like, because with, <laughs> with applets, the, the security vulnerabilities are so huge that they added so much like security software in there that you can't even get it running at all anymore. So it was just a lost cause, you know, it's, it's been phased out like years ago. It was just a lost cause. So I, I compromised and I instead bound them to like keys on my, on my keyboard. So I could just press the keys and change the scenes, which is nice, which is nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. I never, uh, <laughs> I never wanted to be a, like a programmer I, I, I wasn't even like I didn't even want to be like good at math either I wanted to like skip all that <laughs> but then I got I just knuckled down and I learned it you know and now those are some of my my strengths so you could turn weaknesses into strengths I guess if you if you try really hard look at me I'm always in I'm always in tutoring mode I'm always like <laughs> trying to like explain to people how they can improve, but <laughs> I should talk more about like daily events or memes or just funny things, but <laughs> I'm not all plugged into like the, the Twitter feed yet, so I don't have my daily dose of memes, so <laughs> yeah, actually, um, See that fractal behind me? I'm really fascinated by fractal patterns. They have these really cool videos on YouTube called, um, well, I, th I think the one I liked was called the Mandelbox, flying through the Mandelbox. And it's like a three-dimensional fractal that they, that they model and they take flights through it. And it's really interesting. It almost makes you wonder a little bit about our world, you know, is our world a fractal? <laughs> Are we just a series of infinite recursions, one upon the other? Or Are we something more? What is the nature of our, our existence here on Earth? <laughs> yeah, I've, um, I've had some bad dreams actually I guess just when I'm stressed I tend to have bad dreams and one of my worst one of my worst nightmares is about Jupiter 
believe it or not. I am really scared of Jupiter. Um, <laughs> maybe I could explain that one more another day, but Jupiter is is quite the thing. Like, it's so big and so just powerful. It's got so much mass, and the magnetic field is huge around Jupiter. And the magnetic field actually blows in the solar wind, and it creates like a like a jet stream behind the planet, right? And it stretches all the way to Saturn, actually. So Jupiter and Saturn might actually be like <laughs> exchanging material or communicating through the magnetic field, which is interesting to think about, you know? It's interesting. You know, a planet is, it's almost like it's alive. I mean, I know our planet is definitely alive. It's got like living things on it. But I mean like the whole system, the whole like system of the planet, everything that moves, all the wind and all the little interactions that take place both within and on the surface. It's almost like the planet itself is alive in some sense, you know, because what is, what is life? Like the particles, they move, they respond to each other in a coordinated fashion. You have like a central nervous system. A planet is sort of sort of like that right you know you have wind that moves dust and then that changes the air which changes the moisture which changes the local magnetism and over the long run the planet evolves in such a way that it because of all these small effects and everything pulling on it yeah it's almost like it's alive like it's a it's a living being you know and Jupiter Jupiter is alive that's for sure yeah um, so actually sort of the the quick science fact that you can learn about Jupiter is they suspect that inside Jupiter is a bunch of metallic hydrogen um, so the, the theory is that at super super high pressures hydrogen will become a metal actually and we can't observe that here on earth it's always a gas right or actually we, we can get it to a liquid but we can't get it to its like metallic form we don't even know what it would look like what properties it would have so one idea is that perhaps the center of jupiter is just a giant mass of metallic hydrogen and you have to ask yourself like would it be conductive? Would it like conduct electricity? So if Jupiter, if this whole center of Jupiter conducts electricity, is that like a neural network? Is it like passing neural signals around? Maybe it is alive. <laughs> Maybe it is. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, don't don't be uh don't be constrained by our petty existence here. Don't be so limited in your thinking that we're all that, that there is, you know. And so perhaps you could consider, <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> I shouldn't say that. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, um, one of the things about Jupiter that's very, very interesting is, oh, man, I, I'm, I'm spilling a lot of knowledge right now. And I really hope the recording is working this time. I'm spilling so much knowledge. <laughs> well, it's good practice even if it's not recording me. But um, So the way that planets evolve around like the gas giants is very interesting. So one of the things... Well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't tell you that yet, but... Um, Supposedly, the planets around Jupiter orbit at kind of a harmonic frequency, right? So, like, it's almost like they're um, they're orbiting in at radii that cause them to form harmonics with each other. Like, one goes twice as fast as the other, which goes three times as fast as the other. I don't think it's that perfect or anything, but that is definitely a thing. Yeah, they they form harmonics, and I'll, of course, um because of tidal gravity um, all 
these planets are moving away from the planet over time. They're moving away from Jupiter, away from Saturn. Our moon is moving away from us over time. And so you got to think, like, this moon, it's, it's born out of, I guess, I guess, like, debris surrounding the planet, I guess. We don't really know, but, <laughs> I mean, it's a fair presumption. Um, and then it slowly starts orbiting, but then it starts moving away from the planet. And as it moves away, new planet, new moons are created closer to the planet, and they start moving away too. It's kind of an interesting thought, at least. Um, yeah. So one of the most mysterious things about Uranus is the fact that it's tilted on its axis, right? So it's <laughs> it's not it's not like in the um, the grand ecliptic plane that all the planets are orbiting the sun in. It's tilted way off that. And so it's almost like it's on its side. I think it's like an 86 degree tilt or something crazy. So it's almost like it's on its side, basically. And the interesting thing about that is the fact that even though it's tilted like way out of whack, the, po the moons orbiting it are still orbiting the equator. So the moon's tilted with it. And so that tells you something. That tells you that the planet that's that's like rotating is a little bit lopsided. It's a little bit um, ovular. It's not like a s perfect sphere. It's like ovular a little bit because it's got that angular momentum. And so that ovularness um, probably influences the gravity in such a way that it drives the moons around the... Um, around the equator even if they weren't originally going around the equator they start moving around the equator over time because of the lopsided nature of the planet or the um, ovular nature of the planet yeah this is uh, this is the kind of thing that I get really passionate about <laughs> it's a bit nerdy I guess um, but this is me. This is this is pure me. Like, I'm very, very much about this stuff. So, the sun and the stars, and you know, theories about the universe and stuff like that. <laughs> so, so it's not memes. It's not like quick, interesting, you know, snappy content that everyone eats up like a granola bar but I don't care I don't care this is me so this is what I'm all about yeah so um, when I was designing this guy I was like <laughs> this so this guy is like um he's not a live 2d model is like really expensive you have to pay a lot of money to like commission it. It takes like months to create. This is just like a a Vroid model, I think it's called. It's like a 3D model. So it's not as high quality, I suppose. But it's serviceable. It's serviceable. It it gets the point across at least. And I was making this guy and I was like, <laughs> hmm, what features do I want him to have, you know? Like, what kind of traits is he going to have and of course I went for the um, the little bobble on the head you know I forgot what they call that <laughs> I kind of like it it makes me look like a like spaceman spiff you know like space traveler and I've you know I'm wearing a suit of course I, I like wearing dressing nice wearing nice clothes but honestly I'm I'm a little bit disorganized overall. So although I like being super organized and wearing nice clothes, oftentimes I find myself in a rush and I, I just can't spare the time for that. Um, so oftentimes I'll be walking around like, <laughs> well, in like shorts and stuff. Yeah. 
Anyway, one one feature of this guy that I really wanted to emphasize was, um, well, the, the default face I noticed was really, like, androgynous. It was really kind of middle of the road. And I was like, okay, we're going, we're going masculine. <laughs> we're going to make this guy masculine. And so I, I kind of tried to do that as best as I could. I wonder if I can like turn to the side. You can see the, you can see like the nose. Oh man, he's, <laughs> yeah. So um, the the Varoid, or whatever whatever this app is called. Um, they have, they also have a phone app, and I was experimenting with that a little bit when I was trying to think of ways to save my bit rate, right? And <laughs> the uh, the 3D guy that they have on that app is so funny. He like <laughs> you can spawn him into a little world, and he like runs around there. <laughs> and the character I made looks so smug. He looks like completely full of himself, like, <laughs> and he's in a suit too. He's like Richie Rich. I was I was chuckling about that. Yeah, well, um, one thing that I do a lot. Oh wait, okay. One thing that I do a lot is um, I just do a lot of problems. Like I'm just always solving problems. A lot of times they're math problems. I guess those are like easy problems to get your hands on. Like they can like entertain you and level up your reasoning ability a little bit. But I also just like any problems, like fixing things around the house. Like I fixed everything, literally everything. And I'm I'm really good at it. Um, or just like Sudoku. <laughs> I just I just do that sometimes. Um, it's it's pretty fun. Yeah, I've I've gotten into a few video games, you know. Um, but my favorite aspect of the video games in general is the problem solving aspect. Like when you come to a difficult level, you know, and you want to beat it. That's why I like turning up the difficulty like super high because then it becomes a challenge. It becomes like a problem that you have to struggle to solve. And that's that's my thing, I guess. I used to play like Halo levels over and over trying to think of like the optimum strategy, you know. <laughs> yeah. I've never been into like MMOs. I guess I did play RuneScape. I played RuneScape. So that was just. I just played it because it was free. <laughs> it was a free thing that you could do, and it was like, well, it's actually free. Like you could just, you could just do it. You know, I mean, not now they have all sorts of free games, but I was. I really liked like mining <laughs> in that game. <laughs> I don't even know why. I was like a miner. But the thing is, I I was like <laughs> I wasn't super diligent about upgrading my my equipment. So I'd be mining there with like a bronze pick <laughs> and then the guy would come like some super like high level guy would come around with like an, an Addy pick, you know. And just steal everything <laughs> and I'd get I'd like rage at him I'd be like I'm mining here yeah man uh, actually I uh, I worked so hard on getting my my streaming stuff together you know writing my program and everything I actually didn't have time to work out today so I'm gonna have to do that later <laughs> in the dark <laughs> yeah it's okay I, I've done it several times before it's just it's just a little bit uncomfortable but yeah 
I suppose today is like my extemporaneous day, you know, because at least on the on the other days I always had some kind of plan, you know. Today I'm just kind of extemporaneous. I'm just kind of talking about whatever I feel like talking about. Um, I guess I like. Yeah, I was, one thing that still bothers me is, <laughs> I told you I was into Rubik's Cubes, right? Or maybe that part got cut off of the last vlog, but yeah, I was like really into Rubik's Cubes. And <laughs> I, I solved everything myself. Like I didn't look up anything. I figured it all out myself. Um, it's a lot of like visualization, but, but anyway, like, I didn't get the perfect formula for one of the things. And so I always had to like, that always messed with me. That always messed me up. So I, I kept returning to the Rubik's Cube trying to find the good formula, you know, like try to find what is the right, for, what is the perfect formula? The like nice, easy formula for this, for this movement of the cube. And eventually I sort of reasoned that like, what if there isn't one? What if there just isn't a nice formula? What if it's not a nice, compact, easily digestible solution every single time? What if, what if it's actually complicated, you know? And that's something that always bothers, I guess, like scientific people. They want like nice mathematical formulas for everything. They want like everything within their box, the box of like a nice theory, but Sometimes things are just really messy, man. They're just messy. The best you can do is just catalog it. You know? Hmm. Yeah, I've, um... Actually, one, one stream I could do is, um... Teaching people how to read a scientific paper actually read quite a lot of them um, there's like a trick to it you don't read them like a novel speaking of, of novels um, trying to think what novels I was really into well as a kid I read <laughs> like the Red Wall series I'm sure you You've all heard of that one. That's like a famous one for kids. Um, that one was cool. I read like all of them, not just the first one. Um, I do like sci-fi, but I like older sci-fi. The modern sci-fi is so badly written, actually, that it's kind of frustrating to read. It's like, man, I could do better than this. And maybe I will someday, actually. I've kind of, <laughs> well, don't tell anyone, but I've kind of got a, a book or two in the works, so maybe one day, maybe one day. But I, I like the idea of sci-fi, and I like, like, the old sci-fi stories, the short stories, the easily digestible sort of short stories, where they don't try to blow, blow it up into an entire novel, it's more like a proof of concept sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I did read. Oh, maybe I shouldn't go into that one, but yeah, I've read less books recently. Um, I remember I read the Lord of the Rings um, when I was like a kid. I was trying to like prove myself, so I was like, even though I'm a kid, I'm gonna read this super difficult book. And I tend to challenge myself like that, I guess. And I, I think it works out, you know. I think it, it's worked out so far. Um, it's definitely, that attitude has definitely helped me in my, like, competitions. You know. That's an attitude that's sorely lacking from, from everyone these days. Everyone these days is so... 
passive, I guess. You know, we need more hard charging, hard charging people. That's my, <laughs> that's my, that's my uh, societal commentary of the day, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So actually, if the VOD turns out all right, the next thing I could do is add like background music. And I need to like update my whole Twitter profile and get like tons of followers. I actually followed this one person who is a science VTuber and they were like super, super well put together. They were like super organized, super polished. It was amazing. I was, I was like, well, how do you do that? Like, how are you so well put together? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're putting it together. Don't worry. So, <laughs> the thing is, I want my my conversation to follow a logical a logical train of thought but sometimes things just pop into my head and <laughs> I don't know why but <laughs> I've just been thinking I just started thinking about bears for some reason <laughs> so there I have seen some bears like in real life like not in the zoo either and the thing about bears is they are really really like better than humans at almost everything physically at least like they're faster they're stronger they can climb better they can swim faster they're just way more dangerous with their claws and their their sharp teeth and yet and yet, and yet humans, you know, humans outmatch bears, I guess. There's several reasons for that, but I won't go into that today, but, well, I guess I could go into it, because it sort of fits my theme. So my theme that I've established for myself at this point, having three scuff streams in a row, and possibly four, depends on how this one turns out. Um, my theme is, right now, self-improvement. You get to watch me improve over time and get my issues sorted out. And then, yeah, that's my theme right now. And so, the way you do that is persistence. Persistence is key. You have to work hard every day or... I suppose the, the key isn't to work hard every day, but to work consistently every day. That's how it is with like athletics too. If you work consistently every single day, you'll be in a much better place than if you go all out every day. So that's kind of the key. And that is why we beat bears because um, we do not have fur on our bodies. And that enables us to sweat. And sweat enables us to be persistent without overheating. You know, we can work long hours without overheating like a bear would or like any other mammal would. They overheat and they have to like rest and shut down for a long time. But humans can keep going and going and going and going because of our hairless bodies. And that actually might be our biggest advantage more than our thumbs maybe not as much as our brain but it's a big advantage and there's a lesson to be learned and the lesson is consistent consistency uh, repeatability and consistent effort every single day that's the key that's the key the tortoise and the hare tortoise and the hare be the tortoise well actually it would be better if you could be the hare and be like a tortoise where you're also consistent but definitely look look more towards the tortoise hmm. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't enjoy coding, bro. I, I guess you don't call it coding. I guess you call it like programming. There's like some subtle difference between these words, but yeah, it's so much trial and error just working out bugs. I mean, it's nice when it finally works. And I guess that's how people get into it because whenever it works, they get like um, adrenaline in their brain or whatever, whatever you call it. So they get like addicted to it, to like compiling programs. But no, I'm just, I'm just not that into it. I think the issue is that the language I was working with, Java, is just really bad. <laughs> I mean, I, I used to like say, oh, it's just difficult. It's just difficult, right? It's like, I'm actually like, I'm actually like super good because I learned the hard language. But I think it's just bad, actually. <laughs> I think it's just like a, not that good. Um, yeah, I, I just gave up on, on the Java application entirely at this point, so. Uninstalling Java, no more Java. <laughs> no, not really, but. Man. Let's think about music, um. So, I have strange preferences when it comes to music. Um, surprisingly, you'd think that I would like classical music or something, right? Surprisingly, no. Um, I've ha I haven't had much fun listening to classical music. I'm more... I listen to all, all sorts of music. Um, what I really dislike is a snare drum. For some reason, it just rings in my ears. And so I just really like songs that don't have a snare drum. Um, so that's my, my main preference, actually, because you'd be surprised how rare that is, actually. That's because, I, I suppose, the steady beat of the drum is supposed to remind you of, like, the womb and so you fall into like a hypnotic state like you were in the womb so it's difficult to find a song without it but yeah actually um i think i said last time or two streams ago although undoubtedly it got cut off right but then i, I was getting into piano a little bit Actually, one of my good friends was getting really into piano, and he was really good. And so, I was, I was trying to teach myself. I didn't, I didn't have enough time to like learn the instrument very well. But the experience of learning an instrument, I think it's something that everyone should try. Everyone should try it. You know why not, right? And so, I think that. Piano would definitely be my instrument, if anything. But yeah, my friend, he was so good because he learned things so fast. You know, he was he was uh, the star of the class, so to speak. So he would learn things really fast. And he got so good so quick. And the piano that he played on was like a real piano, you know. It wasn't like some keyboard thing. And hearing that sound was so relaxing is way way better than any sort of headphones or any music that you could get like over a recording you have to experience it live in person and I suppose that's why that's why concerts are still a thing right but no it sounded so nice I was entranced by it and that really made me want to learn the piano more so that might be something that I return to in the future someday. The piano. Mm. Writing a book, learning the piano. Got a lot of things to do. Yeah, it's important to have hobbies besides the internet. Yeah, um, I guess... <laughs> well... The internet right now 
you can think of it like a filter. Because this is a new environmental condition that we've just introduced to the world, right? And so some people are getting filtered by it. Just as when you introduce any new environmental condition, there's a filtering prospect process that goes through. And so, unfortunately, um, I think more pensive types who are more in their own head don't fare as well um, in this new environment of the internet. They tend to get uh, lost. Um, as far as myself, um, the thing is, I have a lot of... I guess I have a fair amount of charisma, but not like an insane amount. Not like a... Like, I'm going to convince everybody in the room with just my presence. Um, maybe one day I will have that, but not today. And so I think I think I could be like a live streamer. I wouldn't want it to ever be like my main job. But I get to teach people. And I have enough charisma to teach people, so... I have enough charisma for this, too. Yeah. When I was younger, though, I was definitely, like, more in my own head. And I definitely let the internet sort of consume me at one point. One point or another. But, you know, you got to break out of that. you got to break out of your trance and do something in the real world. Yeah, um, hmm. I guess I could, I could sign off here. It's been a fair amount of time, and I'm not so confident that the VOD is, is going to be there anyway. Um, my model looks like it's moving fine, though. So perhaps, perhaps. So I have to do a whole workout after this, man. Yeah, one thing I've struggled with is like, the workouts take so much out of me. And to return to like, doing work after that is really difficult. I need like energy drinks and stuff. Get my blood sugars back up, you know. Let's see, what else is on my mind? Um, that's a bad thing to say as a streamer. You shouldn't, like, <laughs> mutter to yourself like that. Yeah. I guess I was thinking a little bit about photons. Not like photon torpedoes like Star Trek. I mean, the photon, the particle. The age-old question, is it a particle or is it a wave? And I think the answer is that it's like different people have different, um, <laughs> different opinions about that, actually. I, I know it's supposed to be like a solved question, but one thing that you're going to learn is that a lot of a lot of science is not purely solved. It's not solved in that respect. It's more like, it's more like um, people still have their own opinions to to a certain extent. And the mystery is not fully unveiled. And yeah. So I guess, I guess it's exciting, you know, living in a world where there's still things to discover. You almost have to wonder if... Hmm. <laughs> I'm getting too existentialist. Hmm. 
All right. Um, so there's a lot of improvements to make here. I want to be able to like bring assets onto the stream so I can like show you pictures and stuff. And I might get that set up for next time. So every single day I'm going to be improving, getting, improving my setup. So today, hopefully I actually get a full length of odd. Um, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. All right. So my catchphrase. <laughs> oh, shoot. I already forgot it. <laughs> I, I came up with it last time. Um, what was it? It was like, <laughs> welcome to the heavy side. Or he heavy side out. Alright. I'll see you guys next time. Later.